it's a totally different change from the way we used to record in the pre-digital era and then the digital era of making music for films. It has totally changed, yeah. For the better or for the worse, uh, that's a debatable. But uh, during the analog sessions early on, uh, film making, uh, music making for films was very much enjoyable. I mean, I can see that very clearly, the difference, because there were about 100 musicians playing together, which doesn't happen today. Uh, because of digital convenience, studios have become smaller. Technology is so far advanced that uh, you can do anything. The engineer can do anything, manipulate the recording in any way he wants. Uh, and uh, of course, the results are extremely good, digital. But the process is very, very different. And uh, I find uh, the digital process of recording not as enjoyable as the analog sessions that we used to have. When you sit together with 100 musicians and you play, and then you make a mistake and the whole uh, process has to start again, all over again. And uh, so it was a great test of musicianship. I can please hear that. Uh, everybody had to be on their, at their best and provide an excellent recording of the track. Today, digital recording, it's uh, simplified the whole process. You can make 100 mistakes and that if you don't have the time, then the engineer will correct those mistakes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the things you can do today, it was not possible before, really. Yeah. I mean, one man can create a whole orchestra. Yeah. So as far as the end result goes, Today's music is great, really great, yeah, because, I mean, you can really produce the music to a very high degree of excellence, yeah, and it's happening in the world over. So, the pros and cons for both systems, but if, if you, if I had a choice, I would record analog any day. To promote jazz and other genres out of the uh, commercial field is a tough proposition, really. And uh, uh, what we need is uh, great support from all around, the media, the press, radio, and then the live venues. Yeah, if you have many more of that, then the music it will grow, really, and the audiences will grow. Uh, that is missing today. Uh, because the listening audience is uh, now really subjected to a lot of commercial music which uh, sort of uh, doesn't take toll on your intellect, really. Uh, you can just sit back and listen, but really not listen to a track and just enjoy the, the rhythms and uh, the melodic aspects and the whole tamasha that the music creates uh, in a very non-involved way. Uh, it's simplified listening to such a degree that uh, people don't care really. They don't get into the music. Because when you s listen to a serious piece of music, whether it be jazz, classical or other genres, then the music has a lot to say and that uh, has to be shared by the listener. Yeah, he has to get involved in the music. That is missing today, really. So to get that going and bring it up to date, we need these venues, media support, club support, and radio support and educational institution support, really. And if this happens, then other genres will get that same platform that commercial music gets. 
uh, but I am optimistic and I see it happening because uh, there is a kind of an oversaturation of commercial music which is generally very stereotyped. Yeah. And uh, youngsters who are now very vibrant and they want different things in life and in their li music listening as well, they want something serious to listen to and jazz and classical music, folk music and fusion music will provide that. Uh, opportunities are coming but uh, it's a tough climb because uh, the whole industry is revenue driven. That's the whole problem. Uh, today you cannot get a record company to uh, publish your works and pay for your recording charges. Uh, they're not willing to do that because they feel it's a big risk that they are taking with this music, with this new music, a new artist. So they say, okay, uh, we like your music so, but you give me the whole package. You produce it, you record it, you fund it, everything, and you bring the package to us and we will see how we can distribute it. So that's the scenario right now, which is a tough one for up and coming artists because the recording process costs a lot of money. And uh, that's it, the scenario today is that much and uh, but uh, serious musicians, dedicated musicians are trying their best to promote their own material because they also are sort of fed up with, with the commercial systems that, commercial music that is happening all over. I mean, every time you switch on TV, every time you switch on radio, it's commercial music, yeah. And most of, most of it is film driven. So, so there's a kind of a saturation over there and uh, youngsters, talented youngsters are feeling that and they want to write their own music, which is a very good thing, yeah. And I hope it grows. The niche audience that we have for jazz, uh, who like serious listening, they are amazed at the talent that we have and the new talent that we have is also quite amazing. I'm so happy about that, the youngsters are taking up this music uh, and getting really down to business and, and because it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of practice, you have to spend hours and hours playing this music because it demands that, you know, you've got to have a, a very high degree of uh, technique, virtuosity and above all the feel for this music, you've got to have that and that has to be nourished and developed, cultured through practice and listening. And I see that happening with the youngsters, I'm so happy about that. Myself, I keep on reinventing myself. Uh, what I used to play in the 70s, I don't play that anymore, that style. Uh, I keep trying different things and I'm so happy that, uh, that, I, that I learned to play jazz and then I uh, learned to love jazz and it hasn't stopped. In fact, it's growing stronger and stronger day by day.